Okay, in this video we're going to talk about derivatives of vector valued functions. So I'd like to recall the limit definition from calculus 1. And that limit definition says that the derivative of f of x, f prime of x, equals the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And here's a visual of what's going on for that limit definition. So suppose we have some point x down here and then we apply f, so we do f of x and then that brings us up here. So there's f of x is the the height or the y-coordinate corresponding to that particular point. And then we look at uh, different points. Maybe we look at x plus h, so we move over a little bit, h is very tiny, and we apply f, so we take f of x plus h, and that gives us some height for f of x plus h. And so this difference quotient, f of x plus h minus f of x, that's really a change in the y direction, or it's the rise. Okay, so this is like rise over, right, that's our rise, over run. And so our difference in the x direction is h, and that is roughly equivalent to the slope, which we often call m. Letting h go to 0, that gives us the slope of the tangent line. We're going to do a similar idea with our vector valued functions, so let's take a look at the analogy here. So in this situation we've got r of t is a vector valued function, then the derivative of r of t is equal to limit as h goes to 0 of r of t plus h minus r of t all over h. So here's the idea, here's why this works. If we look at the vector r of t, and that's denoted in red, I'll label it right here, and suppose that ends off at some terminal point p. All right, and then we look at r of t plus h. Okay, so we look at r of t at some future time, t plus h. And that maybe gives us some terminal point q. Well, let's look at the difference between those two vectors. And if we look at the difference between those two vectors, that's another vector going from p to q. And so I'm going to label that purple vector right there. That is r of t plus h minus r of t. Dividing by h just makes that vector even longer because h is very small. And so roughly speaking, r prime of T gives us a tangent vector, okay, and we'll talk a little bit about this in a few minutes. Okay, but that's our limit definition. Now, just like in Calc 1, we didn't use the limit definition very much. We often get right into computing derivatives with our power rule and chain rule and all of that. So let's get right to it here for Calc 3. We've got a theorem. We will use this theorem extensively. So if r of t has components f of t, g of t, and h of t, where g, where f, g, and h are differentiable functions, then the derivative is just the vector function f prime of t, g prime of t, and h prime of t.